All right, today what we're going to do is install the uh, Mini Spitter Pro Retrofit uh, kit, which is just a jumper that will drain the static electricity from the housing of the motor. The things you need, a number one Phillips screwdriver to remove the heatsink screws, a number two Phillips screwdriver to remove the front of the mini spinner, a little bit of foam or cloth or paper to protect the surface of the mini spinner, and a one inch piece of electrical tape. So the first thing to do is to remove the flyer from your mini spinner. And so drop the back, remove the brake band, remove the drive band, and then I usually stick my fingers in like this and press it out. Set the flyer aside, set the drive band aside. Next. Remove the screws from the face. And set them aside. And I'm using the number two Phillips screwdriver. Next, lift the face off. You might have to wiggle it a little. The face is held in place with a couple of locating pins most of the time, and so it might uh, hang up a little bit. Now, remove the plug for the tachometer sensor, and so you note that the wires come out your side. So these pull off to the side, so just remove that, and then take the face and set that aside. Now, set your mini spinner down like this, and I'm going to use the number one Phillips screwdriver to remove the screws from the heat sink. These are only about a half inch long and they're very small and <clears throat> they will come out pretty easily. So we'll set those screws aside. Sometimes it's handy to have a pair of needle nose pliers or uh, tweezers to remove the screws, but it's no big deal. Okay, now the motor is lifted straight out. It is glued to the heat sink, or it's fastened with a piece of double stick tape. So what you do is take your foam, you want to protect that and just flip it over backwards. So you lift it up like this, just roll it over on its back like this. The foam or fabric or paper is there only to protect the finish. To install the jumper, you stick the end with the connector on it through um, the hole where the other wires are fed and you see it comes out the face. And motor is cushioned in a little kind of a, it's an EPDM rubber uh, cushion. It isolates it, the sound from the, uh, from the housing. So anyway, you take the wire and you put it on the bottom of the motor so that uh, the insulation is right up against the end of the motor, take the electrical tape and just tape the bare part of the wire onto the motor. 
This provides a connection that will conduct static electricity from the motor to ground on the controller. Take the motor back upright, pull, grab the wires on the controller and pull them out so that there isn't any slack where the motor is. And then with the EPDM rubber uh, cushion flush with the face of the motor, just gently push the motor back down into place. And then take your number one Phillips and put the heatsink screws back in. You're done with the motor at this point. And you just uh, snug up the screws. You don't have to tighten them that tight. They're just there to hold the heat sink down. But you do want to make sure that it's pulled all the way down. Okay, now the last part, turn the controller like this. The uh, connector we want to remove is the one on this side. There, um, there's a latch on it, so you have to squeeze the latch. This is quite solid usually, so while holding the latch, you wiggle it and pull it out. This is quite sturdy, you're not going to damage anything. Um, Take the green wire, and if you look at it closely, you will, you can twist it and you can see that there are little barbs on both sides. It's going to be difficult to see in the video, but in the PDF that we also provide, you can see that there are wings on it. And you can see, if you look closely at the crimp over the insulation, you can see uh, where the two ears of the crimp come together. So that should be on the same side as the latch on the connector. And so come in from the rear of the connector where the other wires are with the barbs out to the sides and just gently press this into the open hole in the connector. You might have to twist it a little bit and wiggle it. And you will feel that wire, that connector snap into place. And if I tug on it, I can see it, that it's held into place, and you can also see it through the translucent housing. So that's it. All we have to do now is put everything back together. So the connector goes around here, the latch is up, and it goes into the controller like this. Now, the controller is installed in the mini spinner. Um, you might think of it as upside down. And so you can twist this either direction, whichever seems to make sense. I guess in this case we want to twist it this way. Take all the wires and kind of pull them up on the components, the main component side of the board, which you might think of as a top. And then I will typically pick it up like this and holding the wires up. like this, <clears throat> I start pushing it down and you leave it out about halfway because we need to get at this connector to finish putting it together. You take the face like this, make certain this, make certain the wire is pushed into this slot and then you have to put the panel in like that Again, make sure the wire is all the way in. Take the connector and be certain that it's plugged in, that the holes go, <laughs> that the pins go in the holes of the connector. Now you've installed that. So now the hole works, goes back together. Be certain that no wires are caught between the face and the base. And uh, you may have to wiggle it a little bit so that everything lines up. 
push it down on the pins, make certain that the face goes down tight against the base, that there aren't any wires caught in between the two, and put the screws, the three uh, face screws back into place. And again, you just have to snug those up. It's not a bad idea to take a look at the, at the back of it before you tighten them too much and make sure that you don't have any wires caught in between. And so see, I, I look here and I can see that the face is pulled up nice and tight against the base, so obviously there, we haven't got any wires caught in there, so everything is good. So, tighten the last screw. all there is to it. All that's left is to put the flyer back into place. So I put on the drive end. Insert the flyer. Put the brake band on. Reinstall the dry band on the shivs. I usually put it on the motor first, then on the flyer, and we're done. That's all there is to it.